हेलो सो वी आर बैक वंस अगेन मैं हूँ सी ए अनु अग्रवाल हु इज हेल्पिंग यू आउट गेट दो डिजायर्ड मार्क्स इन इकोनॉमिक्स एच एस सी बोर्ड वी हैव डन टिल नाउ चैप्टर नंबर वन टू सिक्स आई टू कप अ सेशन वेर इन वी डिस्कस दैट इफ एट ऑल यू डू योर चैप्टर नंबर वन टू फाइव यूल बी एबल टू गेट एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी फाइव मार्क्स आउट ऑफ एटी मार्क्स इन द एग्जामिनेशन but yes if you want you if you're looking out for 75 or 78 or 80 out of 80 in economics you need to study your chapter number 6 7 8 9 and 10 chapter number 6 video we have already uploaded this is chapter number 8 which is public finance this particular topic from examination point of view you can expect um, a question like give one economic term for the following usme we we find questions from this chapter we also find out um, uh jo reasoning and assertion hota hai wherein they are asking you uh, a question like the gum the public expenditure has increased over the years uske upar we get a question from here and you get a short question a three marker wherein uh, or a four marker from difference between public and private finance so uh, if at all you are uh, actually uh, thinking of ignoring this chapter i would really suggest please do not do it because it is very simple bahut zyada samajhna nahi hai bahut simple hai agar aap just follow karenge mujhe uh, you will be able to memorize this particular chapter in a very very easy manner coming up to the fact that public finance in india first of all before we start looking at your text material let us understand ki पब्लिक फाइनेंस इसका नाम क्यों पड़ा है तो एक सिंपल सी बात यह है कि दिस इज वन ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज जो गवर्नमेंट से एक्सपेक्टेड होता है कि गवर्नमेंट जो है अपने लोगों का अपनी जनता का ध्यान रखे उसको सिक्योरिटी दे उसका हेल्थ का ध्यान रखे उसका एजुकेशन का ध्यान रखे करेक्ट अभी इस सब चीज को करने के लिए राइट गवर्नमेंट नीड्स मनी एंड वो पैसा जो गवर्नमेंट लेता है फॉर द पर्पस फॉर स्पेंडिंग इट फॉर द पब्लिक ओनली उसकी पढ़ाई इज पब्लिक फाइनेंस सिंपल भाषा में दैट्स पब्लिक फाइनेंस सो ऑन दैट नोट लेट अस स्टार्ट स्टडिंग व्हाट डज योर बुक हैव टू से सो लुक एट इट दिस पब्लिक फाइनेंस इज वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट ब्रांचेस ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स विच हाईलाइट द रोल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इन एन इकोनॉमी यस आपको सिर्फ इतना ध्यान होना चाहिए कि गवर्नमेंट एक फॉर्मल या इनफॉर्मल इंस्टीट्यूशन है विच इज जिसका काम है दैट इट नीड्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ द पीपल इन इट्स रीजन राइट तो गवर्नमेंट के फंक्शन ये भी एग्जाम में आया हुआ है दैट फंक्शन ऑफ फंक्शन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ये टू मार्क करके ले आया हुआ है दो टाइप के फंक्शन गवर्नमेंट के हैं एक ऑब्लीगेटरी एंड एक ऑप्शनल ऑब्लीगेटरी फंक्शन तो गवर्नमेंट का दैट इट हैज टू टेक केयर ऑफ द पीपल नॉट टेकिंग केयर मीन्स इट हैज टू मेंटेन लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इट हैज टू प्रोटेक्ट इट्स पीपल फ्रॉम द एक्सटर्नल अटैक्स दैट इज द ऑब्लीगेटरी फंक्शन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड वॉट आर द ऑप्शनल फंक्शन दैट इज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द पीपल हेल्थ सर्विसेज सोशल सिक्योरिटी लाइक पेंशन एंड अदर वेलफेयर मेजर्स ये ये ऑप्शनल फंक्शन है तो अगर आपसे टू मार्कर क्वेश्चन आए कि ऑब्लीगेटरी और ऑप्शनल फंक्शन क्या है तो ऑब्लीगेटरी क्या है दैट इज प्रोटेक्टिंग द पीपल ऑफ योर कंट्री इज एन ऑब्लीगेटरी फंक्शन राइट सो प्रोटेक्टिंग द पीपल फ्रॉम एक्सटर्नल अटैक्स इज एन ऑब्लीगेटरी फंक्शन बट प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर द हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन ऑफ योर पीपल इज अ ऑप्शनल फंक्शन देन दे राइट इट डाउन हियर that the concept of public finance is a combination of two words which is public and finance so public is the collective of all the individuals which are living in the region right and finance simply finance simply talks about the income and expenditure so public finance ki definition likhni ho to aap kya likhenge public finance is the study of principles of income and expenditure of the government at central state or at local levels Am I very good? कोई definition याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है Simple public expenditure is nothing but a study of the principles of income and expenditure of the government at central, state and local levels. Yes, there are two three definitions which are given to you. If you want, you can learn them. But if you don't want to learn it, it's absolutely fine because the defined public finance में अगर आप 
अपनी भाषा में पब्लिक फाइनेंस लिख दें और पब्लिक फाइनेंस के ये जो यहाँ पे डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट फाइनेंस है बट आप इसी पॉइंट्स को अगर आप दो तीन पॉइंट्स को एज फीचर्स ऑफ पब्लिक फाइनेंस करके लिख देंगे यू विल गेट वंडरफुल मार्क्स राइट तो ये जो टेबल है ये बहुत जरूरी है दिस इज टेलिंग यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट फाइनेंस आई एम रिपीटिंग आप इसको डिफरेंस की तरह ना देखकर अगर आपसे एक क्वेश्चन आए थ्री मार्क्स का डिफाइन पब्लिक फाइनेंस तो इन योर ओन वर्ड यू कैन डिफाइन पब्लिक फाइनेंस एंड देन यू कैन राइट दिस एज द फीचर्स ऑफ पब्लिक फाइनेंस जैसे कि पब्लिक फाइनेंस का पर्पस क्या है पब्लिक फाइनेंस का पर्पस है टू गिव बेनिफिट और provide advantage to the people in the society to the people in the region right so that's what they say it public finance ka objective is to offer maximum social advantage but if we talk about private finance of course if i am talking about my finance i'll be looking out only for my benefits right so public finance or private finance agar mujhse question pucha jaye define public finance i can write one of the features of public finance is that the purpose of finance public finance is to provide maximum advantage to the society in case of public finance we first determine the volumes and the places where expenditure needs to be done but when we talk about private finance person first identifies uski income kitni and then wo define karta hai uske kharche kitne hone to ye bahut bada difference hai in public finance you are first determining the volume and the difference different ways of spending but when it comes down to private finance the individual first determines its income and after determining the income it determines that how it will be spent the credit status of course when you talk about public finance you talk about government it enjoys a high degree of credibility but when we talk about private finance the credibility remains of the individual agar mere finance ki baat ho rahi hai then the credibility is of anu agarwal right then government has a right to print currency right individual can't do that they can't print currency public finance is elastic they can define means of raising money or they can think of reducing expenditure a private finance cannot be elastic it it is not elastic it does not enjoy um, any kind there is no scope ki wo income apni badha le you know uske hath mein nahi rehta ki uska promotion ho jaye so and yes um, public finance impacts the economy but private uh finance has a marginal impact because it is the income or the finance of an individual which you are talking about so guys till now what we have understood is public finance is nothing but a a study of your income the principles of income and expenditure of the government at central state and local levels the features of public finance are that it is for the benefit of maximum social advantage to the society it enjoys lot of credibility bank has an option to uh, government has an option to print um, uh, rbi has an option to print notes if required currency if required in case of public finance the expenditures are determined first and public finance has a huge impact on the economy now here i converted this particular thing for defining public finance if a question comes uh, give difference between public and private finance so then you can use the same table for giving the difference the objective of public finance is for the advantage of uh, public at large private finance is for an individual a uh, public finance expenditure is determined first in case of private finance on the basis of income expenditure is determined public finance is elastic private finance is not elastic it cannot change its income public finance enjoys credibility private finance credibility depends upon the individual public finance has a huge impact on the economy private has a marginal impact with respect to the national income because it's a part of the national income and um, uh, last but not the least um, government can print notes through rbi इंडिविजुअल को ये सब कोई राइट नहीं होता वंसरस्टूडरस्टैंड हाउ इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ पब्लिक फाइनेंस राइट देव डिवाइडेड इन टू फोर पार्ट राइट पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर पब्लिक रेवेन्यू पब्लिक डेट फिजिकल पॉलिसी फाइनेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन 
लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड ईच वन ऑफ हमने समझ लिया पब्लिक फाइनेंस मींस हाउ द गवर्नमेंट इज एक्चुअली जनरेटिंग इनकम एंड स्पेंडिंग दैट मनी फॉर द पब्लिक दैट्स व्हाट पब्लिक फाइनेंस इज सो ऑब्वियसली व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट पब्लिक फाइनेंस वी नीड टू टॉक अबाउट पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर कैन बी रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर डेवलपमेंटल और नॉन डेवलपमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर ये शॉर्ट नोट्स में आ सकता है सो स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ पब्लिक फाइनेंस में वी नीड टू स्टडी अबाउट पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड रेवेन्यू कहाँ से जनरेट होता है अब रेवेन्यू कैन बी जनरेटेड बाई लिविंग टैक्स ऑन द पीपल टैक्स कैन बी डिरेक्ट टैक्स और द इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स जी एस टी एज ऑल ऑफ अस नो और इट कैन बी नॉन टैक्स मेथड ऑफ जनरेटिंग रेवेन्यू इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फीस और पेनाल्टी और एनी काइंड ऑफ स्पेशल असिस्मेंट दिस हेज कम इन द एग्जामिनेशन राइट स्पेशल लेवी बोरोइंग दीज आर नॉन टैक्स मेथड ऑफ जनरेटिंग रेवेन्यू वी कैन टेक डेट फ्रॉम द पब्लिक सो पब्लिक डेट internal and external we'll be studying about it when we talk about um, pub fiscal policy we are talking about the public expenditure public revenue and public debt all put together is fiscal policy and financial administration would be the revenue expenditure and the debit policy for overall growth that is how are we managing these uh, you know these expenditure in order to promote the growth of the economy as a whole तो अगर मुझको सिर्फ टू मार्कर आ जाता है व्हाट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ पब्लिक फाइनेंस तो पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर पब्लिक रेवेन्यू तो है ही है पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर में रेवेन्यू कैपिटल डेवलपमेंटल नॉन डेवलपमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर पब्लिक रेवेन्यू में टैक्स नॉन टैक्स टैक्स वुड बी डायरेक्ट टैक्स इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स नॉन टैक्स वुड बी लेवी पेनाल्टीज बोरोइंग right then you talk about public debt internal external fiscal policy would be public expenditure public revenue and public debt and last is the financial administration which is revenue expenditure and debit policy for the overall growth so till here all of us understand the meaning of the word public expenditure वी हैव अंडरस्टूड क्या मतलब होता है इसका एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से हमने समझ लिया अगर मुझे डिफाइन करना हुआ पब्लिक फाइनेंस को तो मेरे को क्या बातें लिखनी है पब्लिक फाइनेंस होता क्या है और जो डिस्टिंगशन था पब्लिक और प्राइवेट फाइनेंस में उसी टेबल में से मैंने पॉइंट्स निकाल के पब्लिक फाइनेंस की फीचर्स को आइडेंटिफाई कर दिया ना गाइज लेट एस स्टार्ट रीडिंग ईच एंड एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ पब्लिक फाइनेंस सो फर्स्ट कम्स इन पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर Now here they say ki public expenditure is that expenditure which is incurred by the government for the public and they say ki earlier in the 20th century the government actually restricted itself to only doing expenditures which are of obligatory nature and they said that they adopted a policy of laissez faire but modern government is also paying lot of attention attention towards the social and the welfare of the public at large so it has started spending on uh, education and um, uh, you know health so this is what they are trying to say so if at all you want to write a a small two liner on public expenditure so you will first write down public expenditure is the expenditure which the government does on uh, the public at large and when we say government it is central state local then you can write down that government earlier paid more emphasis on spending uh, or only on the obligatory functions but the modern government has now started paying more attention towards the social and the welfare of the public at large by spending on health and education public expenditure how do we study public expenditure revenue expenditure means the day to day expenditure which the government needs to incur paying the salary or the allowances or the pensions of the government employees that's revenue expenditure kya kaam kaise chalega na to kharche to karne padenge jaise ek office hai office chalane ke liye jo log uske andar kaam kar rahe hain unki salaries deni padti hai similarly government ko apne log jo unke liye kaam kar rahe hain unke liye unki salary deni padegi administration ka kharcha dena padega that's revenue expenditure कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर क्या होता है एनी एक्सपेंडिचर विच यू आर डूइंग फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द कंट्री लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल यू आर डूइंग एनी एक्सपेंडिचर फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट है कंट्री के लिए 
उस पैसे उसमें इन्वेस्ट करना उस चीज के लिए लोन देना वुड बी ए कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर ये सर सो पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर में एक हो गया रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर दैट इज टू रन द डे टू डे वर्किंग ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर इज कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर वुड बी व्हेन द गवर्नमेंट इज एक्सपेंडिंग ऑन डेवलपमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड उन प्रोजेक्ट्स के लिए पैसा चाहे लोन के फॉर्म में दे रहे हो या इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हो दैट्स कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर डेवलपमेंटल एक्सपेंडिचर मीन्स वो एक्सपेंडिचर जो प्रोडक्टिव हो नाउ वेन यू से प्रोडक्टिव एक्सपेंडिचर मीन्स यू आर डूइंग समथिंग विच इज गोइंग टू क्रिएट और जनरेट एम्प्लॉयमेंट उसको हम बोलते हैं डेवलपमेंटल एक्सपेंडिचर जैसे हेल्थ पे खर्च करना एडुकेशन पे खर्च करना लोगों को एम्प्लॉयमेंट मिलेगी ना द गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग टू स्पेंड ऑन दिस एंड नॉन डेवलपमेंटल एक्सपेंडिचर मीन्स यहाँ पर कोई डिरेक्ट ईल्ड नहीं आएगी आपको डिरेक्टली एम्प्लॉयमेंट नहीं जनरेट होगा बट दीज आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी इनकर्ड लाइक वॉर एक्सपेंडिचर अब वॉर अगर हुआ तो खर्चे तो करने पड़ेंगे उनसे कोई रिटर्न नहीं आ रहा कोई एम्प्लॉयमेंट नहीं मिल रहा बट दिस एक्सपेंडिचर नीड टू बी इनकर्ड सो पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर के ऊपर दो लाइनें लिखने के बाद रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर डेवलपमेंटल एक्सपेंडिचर नॉन डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट मीन्स विच विल विच विल प्रमोट एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी इस तरीके की चीजों में खर्च करना आर प्रोडक्टिव यू कैन टॉक अबाउट हेल्थ यू कैन टॉक अबाउट मेडिकल फेसिलिटीज लिटरेसी नॉन डेवलपमेंट मीन्स वेर एन नो डायरेक्ट ईल्ड will be uh, witnessed but yes they are essential like war expenditure capital expenditure is any expenditure for the development project uh, of for the country usme paisa lagana is going to be a capital expenditure and revenue expenditure is a day to day expenditure of the government after this we have understood what a public expenditure is now there was a question in the examination last time wherein there was a uh, reasoning assertion which was given wherein uh, the line was like this that the uh, there is uh, there is no increasing trend in the government expenditure in the recent times no there is an increasing trend in the government in the public expenditure in the recent times and they have also given reason see it's observed as a, that there's a continuous increase in the public expenditure for a बिकॉज वी आर अ डेवलपिंग कंट्री प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वी आर नॉट अ डेवलप्ड कंट्री हम बढ़ रहे हैं हम एवरी डे वी आर ग्रोइंग सो द पॉपुलेशन बढ़ रही है हमारी कंट्री के नए नए प्रोजेक्ट्स आ रहे हैं बहुत काम हो रहा है तो पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर अगर आपसे क्वेश्चन पूछा जाए कि पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर इज इंक्रीजिंग और डिक्रीजिंग इट इज इंक्रीजिंग एवरी डे राइट थोड़ी देर पहले भी मैंने आपको बताया था दैट अर्लियर गवर्नमेंट यूज टू स्पेंड ओनली ऑन ऑब्लीगेटरी फंक्शन नाउ इट इज ऑल्सो स्पेंडिंग ऑन द ऑप्शनल फंक्शन राइट so if a question comes in that is there a continuous growth in the public expenditure in a developing um, uh, in india so you will write down yes there is a continuous increase in the public expenditure because india is a developing country and then there are various reasons for the same first is government activities have increased as i said government is now not only spending on its obligatory functions but it is also spending money for the education for public works for the recreation so many activities on which the government is spending money so automatically public expenditure has increased population has increased there is a huge rise in the population of our country so when the population will increase logical si baat hai public expenditure will increase so abhi tak do baatein clear ho gayi one is public expenditure has increased because the government has increased this area or um, it has started incurring expenditure not only on its obligatory function but also on its optional functions please write down this second write down population of the country has increased third there is a spread of urbanization right jisse lot of expenditure is being done on roads energy schools colleges right defense pe expenditure badh gaya we we need to protect our country so in modern times defense expenditure jo requirements hai wo badh gayi to automatically uh, we we need to spend money on that so defense pe kharcha badh gaya hai hamara government apne optional functions pe kharche badha diye hain population badh gaya hai urbanization ho gaya hai inflation inflation like government ko bhi has to buy goods and services from the market 
फॉर द स्प्रेड ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल डेवलपमेंट एंड नॉर्मली प्राइजेस शो अ राइजिंग ट्रेंड तो जैसे हम इंडिविजुअल्स को इन्फ्लेशन फील हो रहा है इवन गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो हैज टू गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ इट राइट सो पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर इज इंक्रीज वन मोर रीजन इज इन्फ्लेशन देर इज अ good level of industrial development which has been witnessed in our uh, uh, country guys hence the government has to uh, do lot of expenditure on various schemes and programs which are important for the development of our country and yes baad a gayi earthquake aa gaya ye sab disasters ho jayenge to iske liye bhi to provisioning karni padegi so disaster management the government has to spend a huge amount for the for purpose of uh, uh, any kind of calamity or any kind of uh, unusual circumstances which can be seen so disaster management needs to be taken care right so government has to spend money on that ab dekho friends we have understood all the reasons yes ab mujhe yaad karne ho kaise main yaad karungi all of us understood what public expenditure are याद करने की कोशिश करते हैं हमको कितने पॉइंट्स याद हुए पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर हैज इंक्रीज ओवर द पीरियड व्हाई वन इज इंडिया इज अ डेवलपिंग कंट्री राइट सेकंड द गवर्नमेंट हैज स्टार्टेड स्पेंडिंग मनी ऑन इट्स ऑप्शनल फंक्शंस इट हैज स्टार्टेड स्पेंडिंग मनी ऑन द वेलफेयर ऑफ द पीपल एजुकेशन ऑफ द पीपल रिक्रिएशन ऑफ द पीपल सेकेंड पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द कंट्री हैज इंक्रीज राइट थर्ड government has to now spend with growing urbanization the government has to spend on energy roads transport the government has to spend money on the defense the government has to spend money for taking care of the disasters right which can happen so disaster management with their expenditure and there is inflation which is being witnessed over the years so even the government expenditure has increased and there is a huge uh, growth in the industrial development so government has to spend on those schemes now there is one point which i have not emphasized and that is democracy there has been a spread of democracy this was separately a question that has awareness of democracy led to increase in public expenditure the answer is yes majority of the countries in the world are democratic a democratic country has to do more of expenditure due to regular elections baki countries jahan pe democracy nahi hai wahan elections nahi hote but democratic country mein elections honge to elections pe kharcha bhi hoga because you need to tell see today i need to tell that i i am a teacher who has taught more than you know um, over these years more than 10000 students 60% of my students usually get more than you know 85% in the paper i need to tell this to you right for doing that i i need to make this video right i i need to put this video on the youtube so i need to do the expenditure so similarly a democratic country hai wahan elections honge they, they need to spend money on the elections so public expenditure is increasing because of spread of democracy yes or no so yaad nahi ho raha to can we make some word out of it so ab hum yaad karne ke liye kuch banana chahe to i i think we are getting d four times so d four times ek d hai aapka defense ke liye theek hai ek d hai aapka democracy ke liye ek d hai aapka development ke liye और एक डी है आपका डिजास्टर के लिए यस yes. चार डी है एक डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट पे खर्चा हो रहा है एक डेमोक्रेसी अगर है तो इलेक्शंस होते हैं तो उस पर पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर होता है एक आपका डिफेंस पे हमको खर्चा करना पड़ रहा है और एक इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट पे होता है तो उस पर खर्चा करना पड़ रहा तो चार डी हमको याद हो गए फिर एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट हैज इंक्रीज ए then population has increased then urbanization has happened and inflation apui and char bar d can all of us remember that for the def, for the purpose of remembering that public expenditure has increased over these periods char bar d hai aur apui hai i is for inflation u is for urbanization p is for population a is for the increase in the activities of the government 
और चार डी किस लिए है डेमोक्रेसी डिवलपमेंट डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एंड योर डिफेंस राइट सो डी फोर टाइम्स ओके नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट पब्लिक रेवेन्यू सो पब्लिक रेवेन्यू दो जगह से रेवेन्यू आता है वन इज taxes direct tax and indirect tax direct tax is a tax on the person which is better known as income tax all of us understand you will be reading in your third year of degree college in india so direct tax direct tax uh, ki kuch qualities hain direct tax is a compulsory contribution to the government by every citizen who is earning a particular amount of income this tax which the government collects it enables the government to do expenditure for the benefit of the society at large the the payment of tax does not entitle him that if you are paying tax so directly is road pe to ye road tumhari hui thi yahan se tum ja sakte ho ya tumko koi benefit कोई डायरेक्ट इंटाइटलमेंट नहीं होता है ऑफ एनी प्रोपोर्शनेट या डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट्स नहीं होते बट यस दिस टैक्स हैज टू बी एसेंशियली पेड बाय द इंडिविजुअल अर्निंग अ पर्टिकुलर अमाउंट ऑफ इनकम इन आवर कंट्री दिस टैक्स व्हिच द गवर्नमेंट कलेक्ट्स अलाउज गवर्नमेंट टू एक्सपेंड ऑन द पब्लिक इटसेल्फ पीपल हु आर पेइंग टैक्स डू नॉट गेट एनी काइंड ऑफ डायरेक्ट और प्रोपोर्शनेट एडवांटेज the tax is imposed on its property income any kind of revenue which is being generated now that that's known as um, uh, what do you say uh, so public revenue is the various sources from which the government is collecting money for the purpose that it is able to spend that money so public expenditure karne ke liye public revenue to aana padega so what are the sources from which public revenue is generated one is taxes and the other is non tax revenue now let us fund this first understand taxes before i proceed let me tell you uh, i i saw one of the question coming up on um, quid pro quo quid pro quo uh, it was like this the question was that um, uh, reasoning assertion again uh, wherein it was written that uh, in case of taxes there is a quid pro there is an absence of quid pro quo between the taxpayer and the पब्लिक अथॉरिटी राइट ये असर्शन था फिर इसकी रीजनिंग थी तो आपको ये बात पता होना चाहिए वॉट इज क्विड प्रो को इट मीन्स देर इज अ रेसिप्रोकल अग्रीमेंट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज बिटवीन द पार्टीज टू द अग्रीमेंट बट इन केस ऑफ टैक्सेज वॉट इज है देर इज एन एबसेंस ऑफ दिस क्विड प्रो को राइट टैक्स पेयर जो टैक्स भर रहा है उसके अगेंस्ट उसको एग्जैक्टली exactly कुछ मिलता नहीं है कि इफ आई एम पेइंग टैक्स दैट मींस आई हैव गॉट सम काइंड ऑफ एन एडिशनल एडवांटेज इट डजेंट हैपन सो वी शुड नो दैट टैक्स हैज गॉट सर्टेन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वन इज इट इज कंपलसरी कंट्रीब्यूशन टू द गवर्नमेंट बाय द पर्सन हु इज अर्निंग अ पर्टिकुलर अमाउंट ऑफ इनकम ही और शी नीड्स टू पे अ पर्टिकुलर अमाउंट ऑफ टैक्स to the government this tax is uh, is being used by the government for the general common interest of the society this payment of tax does not does not entitle the taxpayer to receive any direct or proportionate benefits or services from the government in return of the tax and that is why it is said that there is an absence of quid pro quo and that's what i emphasized on for the examination purposes so there is an absence of quid pro quo in case of uh, the tax which is being paid by the person and the government because there is no direct or proportionate benefit to which the taxpayer is entitled to just because he is paying tax and yes that the tax is levied on his income on his property on the goods which he is selling so that's what taxes now canons of taxation uh, canons of uh, taxation th this is uh, separately we'll read taxation but here as of now simple sa anybody who has an ability to pay right that means simple si baat hai if you are earning a particular amount of income just in our country me once you are earning a particular amount of income you need to pay a proportionate amount of money to the government which is known as tax right so canon of equity means everybody in proportion to the income earned needs to pay the government 
it is canon of certainty that is the taxpayer should know in advance how much tax he has to pay and at what time he has to pay and in what form the tax needs to be paid right all of us are aware hamari country mein advance tax bharna padta hai tax ke kya rates hain kaise tax lagega kahan pay karna hai hum sabko pata hota hai so canon of certainty so canon of convenience means it should be uh, convenient for the person who is paying the tax that he can it's it's easy for me for the person to pay the tax that's canon of convenience and canon of economy means that the cost of collect, collecting this tax should be minimum right so canon of economy canon of convenience canon of uh, Uh, your certainty canon of equity Th these were certain principles of taxation which were given by adam smith right four canons canons of equity canon of uh, certainty canon of convenience and canon of canon of economy now comes the fact that once you have understood taxation you should understand tax do tarike ka hota direct tax and indirect tax direct tax is levied on the person himself or herself for example hamare indian income tax mein i am levying tax on the individual or on the firm or on the company so they, they defined who is the person there is a definition of who the person is so when the tax is being levied on the person directly that is known as direct tax right but when the tax is being levied on the goods and the service for example maine um, uh, cold drink piya now us cold drink pe tax laga hua hai but wo tax main hi bhar rahi hu but main government ko directly nahi bhar rahi hu maine wo cold drink ki bottle khareedi wo cold drink ki bottle jo bech raha hai uske upar duty hai ki wo mujhse tax collect karke government ko bhare we need can we can study study this in detail but direct or indirect tax ka simple sa matlab hai direct tax means the taxes on the person the person directly pays to the government that tax like income tax that's a direct tax but when you say indirect tax the tax is not being paid by the person who is actually paying but it is being paid by the person who is actually collecting the tax on behalf of the government let me put it like this in a simple simpler terms manufacturer cheez banata hai उसको वो टैक्स गुड पे लगाना पड़ता है और वो गुड जब वो पर्सन को बेचता है तो कंज्यूमर वो टैक्स भरता है बट कंज्यूमर डायरेक्टली गवर्नमेंट को टैक्स नहीं भरता वो टैक्स बीच में जो होलसेलर है या मैन्युफैक्चरर है उसको भरना पड़ता है गवर्नमेंट को दैट इज वाई इट इज नोन एज इन टैक्स इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज सो डायरेक्ट टैक्स एंड इन टैक्स सो आई होप वी अंडरस्टैंड वॉट डायरेक्ट टैक्स एंड इन टैक्स आर ना ये कुछ आपकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग के लिए उन्होंने वर्ड्स दिए हुए हैं विच यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट डायरेक्ट टैक्स कैन बी प्रोपोर्शनेट टैक्स दैट इज व्हेन एवरीबॉडी हैज टू पे अ सिमिलर अमाउंट फ्रॉम और अ कांस्टेंट रेट ऑन ऑल द इनकम दैट्स नोन एज प्रोपोर्शनेट टैक्स प्रोग्रेसिव टैक्स मीन्स एज योर इनकम कीप्स ऑन इंक्रीजिंग यू कीप ऑन पेइंग अ हायर लेवल ऑफ टैक्स and regressive tax means the larger your income is lower is the amount of tax which you are paying in india we follow progressive tax or you can uh, uh, say that halaki i don't believe that our taxation system is completely progressive because i believe that after a particular slab each one of us is paying a constant rate of tax but yes yes we are paying a progressive tax system in our country that is as you keep on earning more you keep on paying more tax proportionate is everybody pays the same constant rate of tax is there for all kinds of income and in regressive higher the income you earn lower the tax is what you pay now comes up to now non tax revenue sources guys um, ye exam point of view se kyun important hai there was a question in the examination where they have asked the difference between special assessment and special levy right repetitively this has come down so all of us now understand tax direct and indirect tax what are the non tax sources of revenue one is fees wherein government collects fees for example koi registration fees hai education fees hai aapka inka form bharte that is a fees paid for any kind of services which are which you take fees is one way of earning revenue the goods and services which the government sells so any uh, type of commodities and services which the government is selling that is one source of income so 
one is fees the other is by selling goods and services fines you break any law of the country you will be fined for it for violating any kind of laws okay then comes gifts and grants that is the government may receive some kind of gifts or grants from foreign government or some institution for a particular purpose so guys humko kya kya yaad ho gaya and yes i am forgetting borrowing yes government can borrow money uh, from the public through bonds right so government can collect revenue in the form of borrowings like government can issue bonds and people by buying those bonds the people are actually giving money to the government right fees all of us understand right for any kind of services which the government provides you pay fees for it do ho gaye third is for any kind of uh, goods and services which the government is selling okay that's the way the government generates revenue then the any kind of fines and penalties when you break any law you are being fined by the government that is also a source of income to fines ho gaye fines and penalties ho gaye fees ho gaya sale of public uh, uh, public goods and services ho gaye borrowings ho gaye gifts and grants ho gaye which the government receives from any kind of uh, institution or foreign institution right maine jaan bujh ke do chhod diye the special levy and special assessment guys look at it special assessment means some kind of uh the payment made by the citizens of a particular locality in exchange for certain special facilities for example local bodies can levy a special tax on residents of a particular area where any extra special facilities of roads or energy or water are being provided so special assessment is like a benefit which is being provided to a specific set of people or locality and that's the way government earns revenue out of it government provides them with those benefits and for that they collect a particular amount of money that special assessment but special levy is not special assessment special levy is done by the government to discourage people from doing that particular activity for example duty is levied on fine ya opm the government believes that these are harmful to the citizens of the country so they want to discourage people from doing that this is a regular question in the examination guys so please understand special levy and special assessment these are both non tax methods of collecting revenue by the government but the purpose of both these are different special levy is for discouraging people from consuming or using a particular thing because it is hazardous or harmful to the citizens of the country like wine opium and special assessment is like some special facility is being given to a group or a locality and for that the government when it charges a particular sum of money from the citizens that's known as a special assessment so i hope everybody understands what um uh, what are the various forms of non uh, tax um, sources of revenue now guys little bit they have talked about gst let us understand what gst is gst is goods and services tax this uh, has come very recent times in our uh, country uh, this was um, uh, this came in our country on 1st of july 2017 which is also the ca day and uh, being a chartered accountant i am very proud that uh, gst act was launched on the same day and uh, it came into effect on the same day and the purpose of uh, uh, gst is uh, to actually first of all gst means the tax it's an indirect tax which is the tax which is levied on goods and services but the purpose of uh, uh, gst is to prevent the lopsided growth of our of our country we are not talking about gst but to just tell you that the tax which is being levied it is being shared uh, by the central and the state right and um, the uh, the government has made a wonderful uh, effort by uh, making a, bringing about a uniform tax uh, with the advent of gst and so many indirect taxes which earlier existed have been subsumed by uh, under gst now so that's gst 
Now guys, coming up to public debt. Public debt means the way in which the government raises money from the public or you can say by taking loan from the public. So public debt policy is of two types. One is internal. Internal means when the government borrows money from its own citizens, bank, central bank, uh, financial institution, business houses within the country. When you're borrowing money from your countrymen itself, whether it is the citizens, whether it is the banks, whether it is the financial institutions. And external debt means when you are borrowing this money from foreign institutions, like when a government borrows from foreign governments or foreign banks or foreign institutions like World Bank and all, then this is known as external debt. So debt is nothing but a simple way of collecting money from the public. Internal means collecting it from the people of the country, the institutions of the country, the banks of the country and external means collecting it from outside the country that is foreign people, foreign institutions, foreign banks. A two marker difference between internal and external debt. Internal debt is raised within the economy, external debt, debt is raised outside the economy. Internal debt may be voluntary or compulsory in nature, but external debt, debt is definitely voluntary in nature. Not essentially you may raise debts. Internal debt to voluntary or compulsory do no forms me ho sakta hai. Internal debt is always in our own domestic currency, but external debt is in foreign currency. Internal debt is obviously easier to manage, hoga na, so less complex, hoga, but external debt is more difficult to manage because two countries are involved, different currencies are involved. So guys, it's very simple, hai, right difference between internal and external debt. Internal debt is under the country, and the country ke logo se, country ke bank se liya jata hai. External debt, country ke bahar ke logo se liya jata hai, foreign ke institution se liya jata hai. Logical si baat hai, ye internal debt hai to home currency mein liya jayega, ye foreign currency mein liya jayega. Internal debt, easy hoga manage karne ke liye because it is within the country. Of course, this is going to be more complex. And yes, internal debt may be voluntary or compulsory, but external debt has to be voluntary. Aisa ne ho sakta ki ho compulsory hum bana sake. Now coming up to fiscal policy. So fiscal policy is the means by which the government adjusts its spending levels and the tax rates to monitor and influence a nation's economy. In short, it is a financial policy implemented by the government. That is from where we are raising money, how much we are raising money, where we are spending money. That's what fiscal policy is all about. And financial administration means a smooth and efficient implementation of revenue expenditure and debt policy of the government is known as financial administration. Now guys, once we have studied all this, now it is the time for all of us to actually study a little bit about when we're talking about administration, when we're talking about, uh, you know, um, smooth functioning of you know, this process of taking money and spending it on the people, then we need to understand that for this smooth functioning, it is very important that uh, budgets need to be made. Just say, we are going to a picnic, we are going to a planning. We are going to go to a picnic, how much money will be, how much money will be. They call it budgeting. So, financial administration, for the smooth functioning, it is very important that government makes budget. Capital payments refer to capital expenditure and various development projects. They are talking about revenue budget, capital budget, whatever. So types of budget can be a balanced budget, a deficit budget or a surplus budget. This is the exam. But budget ki aap important to understand. If I have policy ko smoothly implement the policy, then I have to make a budget. How many types of budgets are there? Balance budget is jitna revenue and expenditure mein ne socha tha, utna hi mere receipts hai. So it's a balance budget, right? That is a concept of balance budget is that it is neutral. Modern economics believe that the policy of balance budget may not always be suitable for the economy. That is, jitna mera kharcha hoga, utna hi mere revenue collect karunga. That's a balance budget. Thik hai? Now Adam Smith used to say that the policy of Balanced budget may not always be suitable for the economy because कल को खर्चा ज़्यादा हो गया, inflation हो गया, कुछ भी हो गया, तो आप 
तो रेवेन्यू बढ़ा नहीं पाओगे सो इफ यू आर हैविंग अ बैलेंस्ड बजट दैट इज इफ यू आर हैविंग टेन का एक्सपेंडिचर एंड योर रिसिप्ट आर ऑल्सो टेन देर एनी काइंड ऑफ चेंजेस यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू मेक दैट इज वाई मॉडर्न इकोनॉमी बिलीव दैट द पॉलिसी ऑफ बैलेंस बजट में नॉट ऑलवेज बी सुटेबल टू द इकोनॉमी सो बैलेंस बजट आप समझे जितना एक्सपेंडिचर गवर्नमेंट रिसिप्ट इज इक्वल टू गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर दैट्स बैलेंस बजट सरप्लस बजट मीन्स यू आर कलेक्टिंग मोर फंड और मोर रेवेन्यू देन द एक्सपेंडिचर विच यू आर डूइंग अ सरप्लस बजट में प्रूव यूजफुल स्पेशली एट द टाइम ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन बिकॉज इफ देर इज इन्फ्लेशन एंड प्राइजेज आर राइजिंग देन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन इट इज ऑलवेज यूजफुल टू हैव a surplus budget um the rise in prices can be checked by lowering the level of effective demand in the economy now this is a separate thing that is agar there is a tendency of prices to which are being increased they say then this needs to be checked particularly in the interest of those jinke paas fixed income hai agar unki fixed income hai to if price, if inflation is going to be there they are going to have a tough time because they will not have enough to actually do the expenditure so this they have said that in the, in such situations what do we do the rises of prices can be checked by lowering the level of effective demand in the economy this can be done by increasing the taxes right insaan ke hath mein taxes agar badha doge to uski disposable income kam ho jayegi matlab agar wo 100 rupees kamata tha pehle 30% tax tha to 30 rupees tax mein jata tha to uske paas 70 rupees bachte the ab government ne dekha inflation aa raha hai inflation ka matlab you have more money uh, some people have more money so what is going to happen the price of the good will increase price of the good increase ho jayega kyunki mere paas zyada paisa hai saman supply kam hai par mere paas paisa i can buy that good right so because of people like me the price of that good will increase ab ye jo price increase hua hai because i had extra money and i wanted that good so i am ready to pay more for it how do i control this inflation because people who have got fixed income they will not be able to manage this inflation what is the best tarika to manage this inflation one tarika is tax bada do agar 30% ki jagah 40% rate of tax ho gaya to mere paas ab income kharch karne ke liye kitni bachegi pehle 100 rupees mein se 30 rupees jata tha tax abhi 100 rupees mein se 40 rupees tax jayega to mere paas 60 bachega 60 bachega to automatically ho sakta i will not be able to by that particular product so lowering of demand only that's exactly what they are trying to do that if there is a tendency for inflation we should check this by you know lowering the level of effective demand increasing the taxes this is what they are trying to tell you deficit budget means your expenditure is more but your receipts are lesser deficit budgets are useful in the times of depression where all economic activities are happening at a lower rate there is depression can lead to unemployment so government expenditure by borrowing money and through deficit financing uh, uh, they say that such a situation wherein things are low this can be checked by increasing government expenditure by borrowing money and through deficit financing this will increase employment and aggressive effect effective demand for the goods and services and will encourage further investment right ye ulta ho gaya inflation ka ye absolutely ulta ho gaya deficit budget ka matlab jab aap ke kharche zyada hai revenue kam hai aur unhone bola deficit budget kab useful hota hai jab depression ka time chal raha hai activities are low to aise mein kya karoge jab aap you are going to do what government is going to borrow money right what is it is doing it is increasing the demand right this will increase employment wo kharcha karegi cheezo ko spend paisa spend karegi to what is going to happen it is going to create jobs aur अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट वाली सिचुएशन को चेक करेगी अब आदमी के पास जॉब आ जाएगा तो ऑटोमेटिकली वो खर्चा करेगा सो गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग व्हाट इन द टाइम्स ऑफ डिप्रेशन इट इज ट्राइंग टू इंक्रीज एम्प्लॉयमेंट और इट इज ट्राइंग टू इंक्रीज द इफेक्टिव डिमांड ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड अल्टीमेटली ट्राइंग टू इंप्रूव द कंडीशन विच इज एग्जिस्टिंग इन द मार्केट सो डेफिसिट बजट इज अ गुड बजट एट द टाइम ऑफ डिप्रेशन हाउ डज गवर्नमेंट हाउ इज इट गुड बिकॉज जब एक्टिविटी लेवल लो है गवर्नमेंट उस एक्टिविटी लेवल को बूस्ट करने की कोशिश करती है बाय बोरोइंग मनी और यू यू कैन से डूइंग मोर एक्सपेंडिचर एंड 
इंक्रीजिंग द एम्प्लॉयमेंट लेवल इन केस ऑफ सरप्लस बजट वो कभी अच्छा है जब इन्फ्लेशन की सिचुएशन है तो गवर्नमेंट क्या कर सकती है दैट गवर्नमेंट टैक्स ज्यादा लगा के ज्यादा रेवेन्यू अपने पास कलेक्ट करने की कोशिश करेगी जिससे कि लोगों के हाथ में कम पैसा बचे और इन्फ्लेशन कंट्रोल हो जाए और बैलेंस बजट का मतलब तो इनकम एंड एक्सपेंडिचर आर सेम एंड ऑफ कोर्स बजटिंग इज ऑफ बिग इंपॉर्टेंस इन एवरी डे लाइफ ऑल्सो सो इट इट इफेक्ट्स एवरीबडी इन द इकोनॉमी कितना हमको टैक्स कलेक्ट करना है किस तरीके से इकोनॉमी को बूस्ट करना है सो मेकिंग अ बजट इज डेफिनेटली डेफिनेटली वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो गाइज आई थिंक विद दिस वी कम टू एन एंड of this particular session after hearing me out all of you would have understood what does public finance mean you would have understood the features and importance of public finance the difference between public and private finance you would have understood that how do we uh, what is the structure of public finance then public expenditure public revenue public debt financial administration importance of budgeting from examination point of view you should know the difference between balanced budget deficit budget and surplus budget kaun sa budget kis time pe zaruri hai ye aapko pata hona chahiye non tax source of revenue mein maine aapko special levy or special assessment ka importance bata diya hai maine aapko tax ke time par direct tax ke time pe quid pro quo ka importance samjha diya examination point of view se i i think with this all important aspect of this particular chapter have been covered if you have understood whatever i have tried to explain you in a very very simple language then please do like my lecture spread it and tell your other friends if there is anything which you have not understood you can please write and comment and tell me that ma'am on this i need more explanation we will do that until now if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel then please do that all the best guys you shall rock thank you so much see you in my next class